yeah, I did change. And I'm really glad I changed. This one's wife. They use a marriage counsellor. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. News that there is apparently the involvement of a marriage counsellor in relation to the relationship between this one's wife and Prince Harry. It must be stated at the outset that the use of a marriage counsellor by a couple, where one is the victim and the other is the narcissist, is essentially going to be a waste of time unless that marriage counsellor is able to recognise that there is an abuser in the dynamic and advises the other person, you need to get out of this relationship. But based upon the experiences of many of the people that I consult with who had gone down that route, they are not told that. At least most of the time, the answer is something other than telling them to get out. In some instances, I have had clients that have spoken to a pastor who has taken on the role of a marriage counsellor, and that individual has invariably imposed upon the couple the necessity of working through their differences, of tolerance, of compromise, and of keeping the marriage intact. Other clients have sought out professional marriage counsellors, paying an often quite extensive amount of money for someone to listen to the trials and tribulations of the marriage and invariably fail to identify that one of the parties is a narcissist and consequently provides the couple with inappropriate advice. Indeed, it's often the case that the narcissist will use circumstances such as the involvement of a marriage counsellor to get the marriage counsellor on side. Just in the way that the intimate partner primary source has to be controlled, so has the counsellor. And whether this person is a professional one, a therapist for example, some kind of licensed counsellor that has a background in dispute resolution, or a pastor, it matters not. They are a non-intimate tertiary source becoming a non-intimate secondary source that the narcissist must control. I recall one instance of a client of mine who she and her husband were both in the military. She thought many of the problems that were being experienced in the marriage were as a consequence of a reaction to service. They attended a therapist in the role of a marriage counsellor. And she explained how the two of them would walk down the road hand in hand towards their sessions and as soon as they got inside, the narcissist changed tack and made it all about how she was the problem. And ultimately, utilising his charm, got the counsellor on side so that she was viewed as the problem. She later came to me in order to understand what she had been dealing with. And it was patently clear from an analysis of the evidence that her ex-husband was a narcissist and that she had been let down by this counsellor not only in terms of a failure to advise her properly as to what she was dealing with but also in the way that he took the husband's side. I remember one of my readers commenting about the fact that essentially going to marriage counselling is essentially just trying to find a nice way of divorcing peacefully that the marriage is already doomed. And it certainly is the case where you're involved with a narcissist. Naturally, so many people think that an outside intervention might be the key to resolving the issues that they're experiencing with this person. Of course, where they're dealing with a narcissist, such resolution is not achieved by persuasion or causing them to realise the error of their ways. All you end up with is the victim, who understands the poor behaviour they've been subjected to, trying to get across the truth of their experience, which of course threatens the narcissist's sense of control. That then results in the narcissist rejecting it, playing the victim, claiming they're the one that's needs are not being met. They're the one 
that are being abused. And therefore, ultimately, a counsellor will see that there is considerable conflict between the couple and rather than recognise that there is a narcissist at work, endeavours to cause them to settle their differences, putting them on certain actions and responses which merely propagate the misery. Might this be similar for this one's wife and Harry with the involvement of a marriage counsellor? A professional marriage counsellor would simply be unlikely to identify what she is, and the focus would be on resolving their issues and keeping the marriage intact. Therefore, well-intentioned but inaccurate advice would undoubtedly doled out to them. One could imagine that in such a session, this one's wife would do a lot of talking, dominating what's going on, and whilst Harry would express his own views, he would still be wary of the reaction of this one's wife. This one's wife would engage in facade management, portraying herself as a kind, supportive, loving wife, but it's just that he does this and he does that, and he's neglected me and so forth. There will be a mishmash of, mis uh, of revisions of history, where things that simply didn't happen, she will state as truth. And there'll be instances where Harry has reacted, where he will have reacted with anger, with frustration, and those will be used against him. It's likely that she will have obtained some form of footage, probably created by the lieutenant, her mother, which she would then show to the marriage counsellor to confirm that she is the one that has to put up with a great big ginger baby repeatedly throwing tantrums. Naturally, when she has tantrums, those haven't been shown. The fact is, such involvement of a marriage counsellor with the gruesome twosome is not going to lead to a successful resolution. This one's wife will see it as her trying to mend the marriage, approaching it from a holier-than-thou position. But all that she will do is seek confirmation that she is right and that he is wrong. She will use the sessions as an attempt to demonstrate to the relevant therapist or counsellor and the outside world that she's done her utmost to try and resolve the issues and it's Harry that is the problem. But what of this suggestion that they're utilising a marriage counsellor? Well, it comes from the super sore away son and Becky Pemberton writes, This one's wife and Prince Harry's in-house marriage counsellor who they turn to after arguments. This one's wife and Prince Harry are said to have an in-house marriage counsellor who, they, who they can trust if they need advice. This one's wife's mum, Doria Ragland, has reportedly moved into the guest house of their £11.4 million pound mansion in California and is proving to be a big hit. A source stated, Harry always jokes that Dory is their in-house guru, but it's not far off. Anytime they're having trouble making a decision or arguing about something, she's the first person they turn to. This may well be accurate. And, of course, she isn't a marriage counsellor, but she's been given this faux title as she's seen to resolve or adjudicate upon the problems that they're experiencing. Harry, of course, is completely mired in the manipulations of both his wife and his mother-in-law, who acts as a lieutenant of her daughter. All that this one's wife is doing, by turning to her mother, is utilising a lieutenant to agree with her to enable her to assert control over Harry by basically making it two against one. Harry may well respect the views of his mother-in-law, and therefore he has been duped, possibly as a consequence of the excess word salad that these two narcissists are likely to spout, into believing that she's sage-like and wise, and therefore he accepts what she has to say, that if it's coming from her rather than his wife, he simmers down and thinks, hmm, okay, right, so you see it that way too, do you? This one's wife is simply utilising her mother 
as a lieutenant in order to compel Harry to do what she requires. There is no proper mediation or resolution of the problem. Harry is simply caught in a pincer movement. It suits Doria Raglan to do this, because she's also able to control Harry by what she states, and also by being seen to assist her daughter, that allows her to assert control over her. She receives fuel from the two of them. Thus, it's a win for Doria Raglan, and it's a win for this one's wife, because she gains that control over Harry by triangulating him with her mother. It's unsurprising that the two argue. They will do so because she repeatedly will engage in behaviours that will cause him a problem, and he has strong narcissistic traits in relation to anger and argumentativeness. The fact is that it's been suggested that Doria has now taken up residence in the guest house to be closer to the couple and their kids Archie 4 and Lilibet 2. A source explained Doria is so much more than a mother-in-law. Harry looks to her for advice and support whenever he's struggling. If he's had a disagreement with this one's wife, instead of wading in head-on, he'll ask Doria for her take on it first. Doria is said to be good at being neutral and a mediator, and whilst most people would be hesitant about living with their mother-in-law, she is proving to be a marriage counsellor and loving granny all roll into one. The article then repeats information that we have known from in the past, but it shows just how Harry is trapped, that where he has an argument with his wife, and he's not able to resolve it, he just turns to his mother-in-law, who simply then controls him, and does so also on behalf of her daughter. She, of course, isn't a real marriage counsellor. She has been described as such. But the point is, yet again, she's not going to be able to actually resolve the issues All she's going to do is cause Harry to give in, albeit through a different route. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.